So hi everyone and thank you for joining our webinar today. My name is Danny Anku and I'm a, an AWS data scientist and I will be presenting a joint project with um, Bristol Myers Squibb about how to accelerate drug development through machine learning and image classification. My partner at BMS is Jeffrey Kino, who is the lead IT business partner for drug development, and he will present um, the business challenges and the benefits uh, related to this project, while I will uh, focus more on the technical details. Uh, Jeff? Thanks, Dan. So uh, our agenda for today, I will start off with an introduction of Bristol-Myers Squibb, then I'll talk about some of the business challenges we faced and one of the, and the reasons that we are working with AWS to help us get to some of our, our drug development goals. I'm gonna talk about how the initial data set was built. Then I'll hand it off to Dan and he'll talk about the machine learning approach. And finally, we'll wrap it up with how this has affected our process, our business process and the success we've had. So Bristol Myers Squibb is a diversified specialty biopharma company, which means we take the best of biotech and the best of pharma combine them to try to develop medicines for patients to help fight serious diseases. And our approach is to use innovative techniques uh, to develop and discover new medicines. <clears throat> and through that, we want you to develop medicines that can be transformational. So what does it we mean by transformational medicines? We focus on areas that have a high disease severity. We look for we look for medicines that have a potentially large treatment effect. And we also go after diseases with few therapeutic options for patients. And so there are many options and many different types of medicine. One of the most potent that we've found is to use proteins or large molecules to help treat diseases. So you'll notice the title of the slide is what is a protein crystal? And you probably all know what proteins are, but um, one of the things that uh, makes proteins uh, Challenging to work with is understanding their three-dimensional structure. So if we can get a protein to form a crystal, then we can have get some additional uh, capability on understanding how it works and how we can use it. So protein crystals are just like ordinary any other kind of crystal. They're ordered arrays of the protein molecules. And a technique called crystallography can help us determine the three-dimensional structure of those proteins which is a key to understanding a protein's activity. And proteins themselves can be therapeutically potent, but also present challenges when formulating medicines. They have high viscosity, they're temperature, temperature sensitive, their out of administration is often through IV infusion, which is less than ideal for many patients. So in addition to understanding the structure and function of a protein through examining its crystal structure, you can also use protein crystals to help formulate new methods for shipment, delivery and administration of medicines to patients. So what's our business challenge? So as it turns out, sometimes having convincing a protein to form into a crystal can be a bit of a challenge. So we run experiments that subject uh, proteins to a broad array of uh, conditions and try to induce a crystallization. If scientists will generate an experiment uh, set up arrays of conditions, and then examine uh, over time those uh, experimental wells using a microscope and taking pictures. Those photographs are inspected manually by a trained scientists to look for the formation of crystals and to see what's going on in those wells under those conditions. And you can imagine uh, this could generate hundreds or thousands of images and doing manual inspection can be slow and tedious, potentially error prone, and can is not often the best use of our of our scientists' time. So we're looking for a way to improve this process. So our technical challenge is to use image recognition, apply machine learning techniques to help us identify wells that have crystals forming in them and do this in an automated way so we can go through hundreds or thousands of images in a very short time. Um, BMS has some experience with machine learning, but expertise in that area, we really wanted to partner with AWS since they could have some tools and techniques that could help us bring that into reality. Fortunately for us and for AWS, there's a large data set already in place that could we use for training. 
So the data set is called MARCO database, and that stands for Machine Recognition of Crystallization Outcomes. So this is a, a large number of images, over 400,000 images, gathered from multiple companies, including BMS, and some academic institutions. It's designed for the very purpose of what, what we're doing, doing image recognition and applying machine learning techniques to help us identify crystallized proteins. So this uh, data set um, was developed a couple of years ago, and we are using that as this, this seed data to help us start off our journey into creating a machine learning, <clears throat> machine learning process uh, for um, helping us improve our workflow when identifying uh, protein crystals. So here's some example images from the Marco data set. And as you can see, it would take a trained scientist to understand what we're looking at. On the top row, these are images which can show are showing us proteins that are in crystal form. The second row are other possible classifications of the images, the first being a precipitate, the second being a clear well, and the third being an anomalous well that does not fall into the other categories. And we can see that these a large number of images came from a, a variety of different sources. Um, so of the 400,000 images, the source of those um, is spread out over the contributors. And each of the contributors may have used a different technique or instrument to develop those images. So while this is a powerful data set and the model they developed is useful, it would be more useful to us if we could tailor it to our specific workflow and instrumentation. And that's where AWS stepped in to help us develop a more tailored model to meet our needs and something that we could use to to tweak uh, and meet our specific workflow goals and, and business needs. So I think Dan will take over here and start talking about how the model was developed. So this work started from um, um, examining previous approaches to um, automatic uh, image uh, classification. So in 2018, based on the Marco data set, a research article came out that um, showed that by using deep learning and other computer vision approaches, um, it was possible to classify the images with up to 94% uh, accuracy, which is uh, very impressive. And in some ways, it is better than and more consistent than what the human labelers uh, can achieve. And this is even more impressive when we consider the the technical challenges facing an automated uh, tool for classifying the protein crystal images. Um, as Jeff mentioned, um, the images themselves came from five different institutions. So even within a single institution, there are different microscopes and different settings and even possibly different classes of proteins that are being imaged. So as you can imagine, uh, putting the, all of these um, um, different settings and different image um, um, characteristics on a common platform was very challenging. So one, one way in which deep learning and modern computer vision techniques can help is to automate the whole process of ingesting these images. So the human labelers and the downstream data processing is not bogged down by the necessity to, to resize and uh, put the images on a common footing. So uh, in, in short, the images are fed to the algorithm as they are. So as, as I mentioned, the um, already published data achieved uh, impressive um, classification accuracy. However, there are a number of benefits of um, implementing the same uh, work or similar um, algorithm within the AWS uh, environment. And this relates to the fact that we can bring uh, enormous storage and compute resources and a whole set of um, automated tools such as um, SageMaker. So um, AWS SageMaker uh, can uh, provide um, um, an automated way of classifying these images and it has its own image classification algorithm. On top of that, uh, we had to implement a custom design image augmentation procedure. So this was a more of a traditional image processing technique where we tried to mimic the crystal growth process. So crystals that were captured at different phases of their um, um, 
uh, crystal growth process could be processed without um, any um, any issues. Um, another benefit of uh, performing this work within the AWS uh, environment is the capacity to deploy it as a production uh, um, ready system. So um, we can deploy an in-French endpoint uh, and uh, we can just send images to this uh, inference endpoint. And at the end of the day, we, we can send one image at a time or thousands and thousands of images and uh, results come back in a reliable and timely fashion. And one may perhaps the most important benefit is the capacity to integrate with the already trained manual workforce that BMS is using to um, label these images. So here are some of the early results that we achieved using SageMaker's image classification algorithm. So we performed a large number of um, training jobs and all of these were um, uh, performed with different settings within what is called in the, within the machine learning community, a uh, hyperparameter optimization. So here we really made use of the uh, high level of compute resources that are um, uh, available within uh, SageMaker. And here is more details about the performance of our um, algorithm. So within the training data set, which comprises the, the you know, uh, over 400,000 images, we achieved um, more than 95% accuracy. In another uh, subset of the data, which we call the validation data set, we achieved um, about 93% accuracy. And uh, the most important one within the test data set, we achieved um, about 88% accuracy. And this is the most relevant accuracy measure because this is the data that the algorithm never seen during the training process. So if you look at the tables below, on the top we have the correct classification of the images and on the left we have the predictions. So as you can see, the vast majority of the images are on the main diagonal as, as they should. So a perfect classifier would only have uh, non-zero numbers on the main diagonal. And on the right, we can see the same results uh, in a percentage um, format. So most importantly, we see that the crystal, we can achieve um, you know, in the high 80s percent accuracy um, for the crystals. And these are the most important um, um, images to classify. So in, during our discussions with the technical team at the BMS, um, we gathered that you know, it's very important that we do not miss any crystals, even at the, at the cost of classifying incorrectly some of the other category as crystals. So in technical terms, um, that means that we want to achieve a very high recall. And the precision is important, but it's a secondary metric. So during our um, uh, data analysis, we can adjust the setting such that we achieve either high recall or high precision. And ideally we could achieve uh, both. And in the curve that you see on the, which is called the precision recall curve, that would be on the top right uh, corner. So if we go all the way to the uh, top right corner, that would be a perfect classifier. As, as you can see that our classifier is, um, is performing very well. So to go uh, to give a, a further into this um, concept, if we um, relax the threshold for the recall and we just want to uh, collect 90% um, of the um, crystal images, then our precision as expected goes up to 92%. And we predict, uh, in this instance, we predict 15,000 images as crystals out of the 47,000 in the data set. So now how do we use the existing model? As I mentioned, um, the AWS environment um, provides ready-made solutions for uh, having a production level system. So we can have an online inference endpoint, which is a live resource, that returns predictions as they are being sent uh, from um, an HTTP uh, application or um, some other way of piping the data to the inference endpoint. 
Um, so this, this works uh, as one image at a time. If we have a large number of images, um, we can uh, use what is the, a resource that's called batch mode, which uh, means that you can send 47,000 images at the same time, and within an hour, they'll all be classified. So practically speaking, what we get for each image that's being sent to the classifier, we get a probability that um, signifies the um, how likely it is that um, an image belongs to one of the four classes, either crystal or uh, one of the three other ones. So now, how does a complete production solution um, look like? So we wanted to integrate our automated classifier with the manual labelers that work for and that are uh, well trained by BMS and um, we wanted our solution, our computing solution to learn from the human labelers. So we deployed an additional um, AWS program called a um, batch, um, batch action which allows us to present a panel of images to the human labelers and uh, all they have to do is to detect which of the images are not truly crystals. So in the examples that I gave before, if we wanted high recall, 99% recall, then we um, classified 19,000 images as crystals. If we relax the threshold and we have only about 90% recall, then we have about 15,000 images that are classified as crystals. So the difference of 4,000 images that um, the algorithm has lower confidence in the classification, they will be sent to the human labelers and the human labelers would exclude the ones that are not crystals. And now this new data set would be uh, utilized to further refine and improve the model. So, as future directions in, in the technical um, realm of this project, uh, we can optimize the, the, uh, the, the computer solutions such that we focus on the Bristol Myers Squibb images and their particular um, uh, settings and their particular microscopes. And now I will send it back to Jeff, who will talk more about the benefits and the business um, uh, improvements that we achieved using this tool. Thanks, Dan. So from the Bristol Myers Squibb perspective, um, some of the outcomes that we had was in one instance, we were able to review a typical review time for manual review images from eight hours down to 30 minutes, which is, a, which is, a, which is obviously a significant improvement in time. Um, we expect additional gains. As Dan mentioned, this model can be tweaked to our specific workflow. Um, we recently acquired change from one device to another to do our imaging. So once we develop a good library of images from that new model of, of imager, then we expect that that will um, allow us to feed more images into the model for, for, better, for better outcomes. And the other thing we like is that the, the SageMaker model that was developed, we can integrate that into our um, imager workflow. So the tool that we use is called a Formulat Formulatrix Rock Imager. And we can take the model that was developed and, and integrate that directly into the workflow with that instrument. So uh, we don't necessarily need to build a separate pipeline. And um, this, is, I, this, is, this has proven to be a, 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 valuable, um, a, a valuable outcome for, for BMS. And the a AWS solutions they have built is, has some great promise for our ability to um, improve our outcomes and generate more and more data as we go on our uh, develop, drug development journey. So thank you. And uh, from my side, I would like to acknowledge several folks from the BMS side. So on, on the scientific side, we have Michael Little, Rob Garmise, and Matt Pokross. And the, on the IT side, uh, who especially helped with our relationship with AWS, I'd like to thank Tim Wasalski and AJ Samant. And of course, I'd like to thank Dan and the whole AWS team. Uh, thank you, Jeff. And this concludes our um, uh, webinar for today.